Hello, today's video is going to be on synthesis writing, a process that we actually started last week. Um, the main concept of a synthesis is getting different viewpoints from different authors about a given topic. And so this week, our given topic is coronavirus. And within that umbrella of coronavirus, uh, we had, had had identified some subtopics of coronavirus and how it affected education, how it affected business, how it affected the healthcare industry, um, mental health. Uh, so there were some different subtopics within the one umbrella of coronavirus. And you guys were to find three sources that all had different perspectives. And that's the main thing um, that uh, a synthesis brings to the table are th different topics from different different authors with different perspectives on a given topic. Now this week in your textbook, uh, which is chapter 18, it's on page 258, it talks about a synthesis in regards to um, literature. But I do, and I want to clarify that when we hear the word literature, we automatically think of like Jane Austen or books, uh, creative writing, that kind of thing. But literature actually encompasses anything that's written. A pamphlet is literature. Um, articles are literature. Anything with written words is considered literature. And so, um, so I wanted to clarify that because as you're reading this week and, and it, you know, uh, usually, like I said, we've made those associations with certain words. I wanted to clarify that you are utilizing literature in order to create this synthesis. It's not in what we have um, characterized it in the past of being more of that English stories and things of that nature. OK, so you are utilizing literature with different perspectives from different authors. So it meets that criteria. So kind of going through chapter 18, I just want to um, kind of highlight certain areas for you um, as we're going throughout this week. I cannot stress uh, the importance of utilizing your textbook in conjunction with the videos and coming into class prepared so we can discuss and fine tune any questions that you may have. The text is really a great resource. Not only does it walk you through what a synthesis is and the things that you need to be mindful of, but at the end of chapter 18 on page 265 through 267, it actually has uh, an example of a synthesis paper written in MLA. Uh, the only difference is this is not Times New Roman, which is a requirement, but you'll see the strict double space. You'll see the running header and all of that um, information. Hopefully you're going back and looking at uh, critiques and seeing what your comments are um, from you know, a couple weeks ago as, I, as I've been getting those in, it's taking me a little bit longer because there's a lot of edits. So if you've not received that back, I am working on getting those back as soon as possible. But what I can tell you what I'm seeing overall, um, we need to follow instructions and really utilize the resources that are being provided um, in order to create these assignments. Um, like I said, your textbook is an excellent resource. It really walks you through step by step. And um, by starting the process last week of finding those sources, honestly, that is the hardest part is finding different perspectives, um, having that information, substantial information in order to write a paper. Once you have that, then it's just a matter of organizing that information and into an organized paper. Now this week in your module, I have also included uh, the textbook that I've been writing for my 100 class and it's chapter four and it really talks about outlines. And I strongly encourage you to read that and um, just to kind of get the idea of really what an outline is, it really is the roadmap of your paper. And if you can take all that information and all those notes that you've been taking last week and put them into an outline, which is your map, and organize them. Once you're ready to sit down and write, you have all of that information with all your in-text citations right there. And honestly, you shouldn't have to go back to any of your sources because you've already organized it uh, so you're able to create that paper. Uh, theoretically and realistically, if you have done it correctly, uh, you, all you have to have is that outline and you can go ahead and type that paper, at least that first draft. Strongly encourage you, don't wait till Sunday to do this. Um, you know, writing 
is a process. And so once you have your outline and you get that first draft, then you really need to go back and revise it and make sure that you um, have communicated your message appropriately in the way that you want it to be received. All right, so let's just jump on in. So starting at um, chapter 18, basically, um, writing a synthesis, you're comparing or assessing the views of a variety of authors on a specific topic. I want to know that. Um, it gives you practice in using sources and academic papers. And you'll notice when we did the critique, it was one source. For this particular paper, it's three sources. Our next writing, assum our writing assignment is going to be four sources. And so we're really scaffolding that because I really want you to be comfortable with finding those sources. Um, understanding synthesis papers, you typically survey a range of opinions on a topic um, and sometimes a controversial one. Coronavirus, it, there is some controversy with that. Usually when you have different perspectives and different viewpoints, usually there's a controversy that's uh, surrounding that. But that's okay because um, by uh, this academic research, we're continuing that conversation and only you know, with having these conversations with different perspectives, really are you able to get to the root of things and really make discoveries and final conclusions. Uh, because through the process of any type of research, uh, you have to start with the different perspectives and all that information is out there before you can really form. What is it that you think about that? All right, um, a couple things. Uh, usually over a specified period of time. Okay, when your assignment is to prepare a review of literature, which is anything written, you will identify and report on the most important books and articles on the subject, usually over a specific period of time. Currently from the past, past five years, over the past three decades. Okay, well this is pretty new. Um, this doesn't even have a whole year under its belt right now. So everything that you are utilizing is pretty current, so we're good there. And it goes on to say, um, identifying reputable sources on your subject, using library catalogs, research guides, and online tools. Again, those online tools are those databases in your online library. However, this week, you may not have found what you needed. And so it was okay to use the internet to go find other credible sources. And that's gonna butt up to your discussion boards this week because I want to know uh, when you were, if you had to go outside of the online databases and go into uh, different online, um, you know, web pages and websites, um, how did you determine that that was credible? What was your, what was your guidepost? Um, because remember, that's very important, especially about topics that they, there's a lot of opinions, but we're looking for credible sources. We're looking for things from the medical industry. We're looking from business aspect, people who are uh, credible in those specific industries. Um, they've been doing it for many years. They have the certifications. They have the education that goes behind them. And so when they are giving insight to these things, they are taking more seriously. It's not just an opinion. They're backing it up with facts, and that's very important. Um, summarize, paraphrase, paraphrase the works that you've identified. Summaries are the gist. That's over, uh, like if I was doing one article like we did in our critique, and paraphrasing is the length there. That's more of the passages within the given article. I will tell you, reading through some of the critiques, some of them were dangerously close to the uh, original content and that can be considered plagiarism. So I'm going to give you a guide right now. If you have four consecutive words from the original source, it better be in quotations. You cannot drop a word or here or there and keep the core content of what someone else has said and say that that's in your own words or paraphrasing it. Um, that is considered plagiarism and I hope that you are taking notes on this. Um, and so where some grace may have been given um, on some of these critiques, I can tell you, I do know how people write. You have been writing for me all semester, and if it does not sound like you, I am going back into original sources, and I have. Um, and so, like I said, some of, even if you're just moving things around, if it's four consecutive words in the original context and you're putting that into your writing, that is not a paraphrase. Dropping a word here and there is not a paraphrase. It is taking that passage 
and then you are recreating the core of what that passage is and you're putting it into your own words where only the idea of what was in the original con or the original passage is shown through but not using all of their words so be very very careful with that and we're going to talk a little bit about that in class this week um going into page 260 look for connections between your sources examine them in relationship with each other to determine where they come down on the issue um, and I like this because they give you some transition words on how you are transitioning from one idea to the next. So I did want to bring this um, to your attention. Think about the categories to describe the stances, similarity, difference, congruence, divergence. You see this kind of yin and yang thing. Consistency, inconsistency, uh, conventional, radical, um, how a controversy has evolved and where it stands now. That's very important. Um, Materials and verbs of attribution, such as describe, reports, points out, asserts, argues, claims, agrees, concurs. These are those words that you're going to be utilizing within your writing um, to help fill that out. And that's those are kind of like those transitional words. Acknowledge disagreement and rebuttal. Describe accurately all the opinions you encounter. Uh, and introducing them with verbs of attribution such as questions, denies, disagrees, contradicts, undermines, again, gives kind of a list of these words. Um, are you looking for those? Are you looking for these concepts, but utilizing these words in order to bring them to light? Do not rush on judgment. Now, this is what we've been talking about, and especially within your critique. Academic writing, typically, this is your standpoint. You are objective. That is what research is. It is that you are trying to find truth through different sources. If you are leaning towards a specific concept and in your mind, this is my concept, then can you see how that could uh, fog over what other people are or, or, or different opinions? Because already you've set your mind to this is the way I think and you're not allowing yourself to see a different viewpoint. And that is not what academic writing is. You ha academic writing is being objective and being able to allow yourself to receive different opinions, different perspectives in order to gain a more uh, educated and uh, grounded idea about what something is about. And that is so important. And especially here, the more sources that you are adding to this and you have to have specific perspectives and again in your discussion board this week I want to know what are the different perspectives under your subtopic that you have to make sure are they really different perspectives okay um, so that's very important cite materials that both support and challenge your own thesis you want to be challenged there's always more than one idea in one perspective on anything OK, are you, uh, I like to say it, courageous enough to um, be receptive to listening to it. Now, once you listen and you're being objective and you've done your research and then at the end of the day, you're like, you know, I really do not subscribe to that. But it's because now I have more evidence as to why, then that's different. But if you are shutting down the conversation before you even get to that, you're actually doing yourself a disservice. Uh, getting the details right. Provide a context for your topic. Um, Identify your subject and placing it in the historical and cultural concept. Help readers appreciate why an issue is important. Tell the story. Uh, pay attention to language. Oh, I really want you to read this paragraph. Keep the style of your synthesis objective, neutral, and formal. In most cases, and it's all cases, avoid I. There is no first or second person in this paper at all unless it is in a direct quote. Same thing with contractions. You do not use contractions or first or second person in academic writing because I've stated already that all of our papers are to have that formal high level writing. Okay. Um, and in the critique, I even said that this sounds more low level. It's not insulting. It's not low intelligence, but remember when we went through low, medium and high level of writing and really what the characteristics are of each of those types of writing, I'm looking for high level, which means third person. Um, it has to be formal in nature, no contractions. 
okay? You do not use everyday vernacular. We talked about word choices. Um, you really want to step up your game with formal writing, okay? And, and if you need to go back and review that information, I strongly encourage you to do that because, because we've gone over it, you've been assessed on it, and it's a requirement, I am grading for that and I am looking for that, which means if you're not meeting the expectation of high level of writing, um, there probably will be points lost. Um, be sure to document your sources. Now, this is really important because you are using multiple sources, which means in-text citations are required. They are mandatory. If you submit a paper and there are no in-text citations, it will be plagiarism. I'm going to repeat that so you understand the severity of what I'm just saying. You have to distinguish between the sources and the information you have extracted from each source, which means I am looking for an in-text citation within the content. So as soon as you use something from one of your sources, an idea, a concept, then I need an index in-text citation. It has to refer to your works cited page. Your works cited page are the bibliographies of the sources that you've used. Your in-text citations are those arrows within your paper that point back to the, the bibliographies. Again, I cannot stress the importance of looking at that MLA guide that I created for you guys and that I've put in your resource module. Um, and it talks about that. It talks about how to do in-text citations. Um, if, you know, if you don't feel like doing that, PurdueOwl.com, go online. How do I do in-text citations on an MLA document? There is not difficult. It takes like two seconds in your life, but it can mean the difference between points and zero points. And at this stage in the game, we really have to be um, very particular about the work that we're producing and making sure that there's integrity and character behind what you're writing and that it is yours. It's not that you're not using information from other sources. That's fine. That's what research is about. But you've got to give people props. And if you're using someone's ideas, if you're using someone's research, their concepts, you got to let them, you've got to give them props because that's their work. And if you don't do that, it is considered stealing, i.e. plagiarism. And that's why it is such a severe um, penalty on that. And remember, if it is deemed plagiarism, I have to submit that to um, my authority for them to review. And it takes it out of my hands. So please make sure that you are very diligent in that. And that's another reason why you do not wait till the last minute because things will fall, with, fall between the cracks and you don't want that to happen. It's also another reason why you do an outline because if you look at chapter four that I've placed in your modules and I've walked through how to set up an outline, you will see that there are any time that I have a fact, I'm going to write that fact out and then right beside it, I'm going to do the in, what the in-text citation looks like. So that will ensure when I go and I'm typing my paper, as soon as I have paraphrased it and, and filled that out, I'm going to have that in-text citation and it's going to ensure that I do not forget it. Please do that as you're writing. Do not expect that you'll go back and do it. People forget. People will miss it. You will miss it. Be methodical and do it while you're, put those in-text citations in while you're writing. Um, and then it goes into the model, gives you things to read about. And then on chapter, um, page 265, it's not a long chapter. It's not a long chapter at all. So make sure the biggest part of this assignment was the resources, gathering information, uh, key things, has to have different perspectives that are being represented by different authors. Um, and then getting the information that you've extracted from those articles and get them into an outline. And that's basically it. And then those, those summarization or those concluding paragraphs are basically um, that analysis piece of it of how you're responding to that information in third person. You cannot give your opinion in first person. I know you want to, but I promise you, one, it'll be stronger without personal eye. Um, but what were the final uh what were the final takeaways from you researching these different perspectives? And that's you ending the conversation after I've done all of this search, I've done all of this research, after I've gone on and you know, I've got all these different perspectives and I've looked at all the different angles. 
What's my final takeaway? Okay, this paper is designed like every other paper. You have to have an introduction. I'm looking for a thesis statement. Your intro should be probably three to five sentences if you're needing a sentence count. And then your body paragraphs are, remember, one idea per paragraph. One claim with the evidence per paragraph. Okay, please make sure that you're utilizing paragraph form. Your paragraph needs to be indented and your indent is one inch. Now, typically, if you hit the tab, it's automatically going to do that. Sometimes, depending on what you're typing on, sometimes it'll go in two, two spaces. That is not sufficient. You need to take it in one inch, which I find is probably like 10 spaces or around there. Um, if you're if something's wonky with your tab key, but it has to be a substantial indent for the first uh, first line of your uh, paragraph. Uh, don't forget on your works cited page, which your um, MLA packet goes through, it needs to be formatted correctly with the hanging indent, which means the first line of your bibliography is up against left margin. All subsequent lines are indented. Okay, please make sure that you follow that. Um, I certainly hope that you've watched this video, you've read, you've actually started getting all of that information together, perhaps even have written that uh, rough draft for your paper. That way, when you come back to it at the weekend before final submission on Sunday, you've had an opportunity to read it out loud exactly the way that you have it written and do some of the fine tuning. Is your spelling correct? Is your punctuation correct? Are you communicating to the reader in a manner that they're going to receive it? Does it do you justice in the research that you have just completed? And so, um, again, please use the resources that you have available. Please make sure that you're reading the instructions to find out, um, you know, what is necessary. Submission guidelines, all of that it needs to be on a Word document. Okay, and I've walked you through, I've given you all these resources. Please take the time to use them. Um, print them off if you need to, especially with that MLA guide. If you're printing front and back, it's only five pages. I think it's like a 10 page document. Um, but I give you pictures, I, I, I walk you through everything. Um, so please make sure that you're doing that. And before we get into class this week, you know, if you've already started this process, that means when you come into class, you can ask very specific questions that I can answer. Um, to help you move you to the next level rather than don't wait to come to class and me just impart all of this on you because we just don't have the time. That's why I'm doing the video. So, all right. Well, I love you guys. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you guys in class.